Hello guys, welcome back to your new video of Medotrix.com. In today's video, we will be discussing about diuretics, uh, its uh, indications for which it is used. So first we will see the definition or about diuretics. Diuretics are also called as water pills which help your kidneys put extra salt and water into the urine. This is how diuretics clear extra fluid out and bring down our blood pressure. Diuretics also help when we have too much fluid collecting. Uh, we, we call it as edema because of heart failure or any other medical conditions including liver cirrhosis. So diuretics also known as water pills or medicines that help you move extra fluid and salt out of your body. Uh, this makes us uh, urinate more frequently which is why we should take them in the morning and we may need to take diuretics once or twice a day at the same time each day. And we have several classes of diuretics the most prominent or important classes may include uh, carbonic anhydrase inhibitors, osmotic diuretics, thiazide diuretics, loop diuretics, potassium sparing diuretics. Indications of diuretics so diuretics used in several edematous and non-edematous conditions when body abnormally sequestrate fluid in the third space in the form of edema the removal of extra fluid is done by diuretics so the conditions in which these diuretics are used the first one is heart failure which is an edematous condition so inefficiency of the heart's pumping ability will obviously lead to reduced blood supply to the kidney we call it as reduced renal perfusion which will ultimately activate the renin angiotensin aldosterone system in order to increase the blood pressure and also the long standing venous stasis leads to extravasion of fluid in interstitial spaces when the fluid enters the interstitial space the intravascular fluid volume expansion takes place and which will ultimately cause the signs like weight gain, dyspnea and generalized edema. And the second condition in which the pulmonary uh, edema where most common cause of heart failure requires diuretics use. The first one uh, or the first line choice is loop diuretic example furosemide. So we start at the lowest dose and we titrate upwards. And we should monitor the urine output and the body weight while the patient is treated with do, uh, loop diuretics. And when loop diuretics cannot relieve the symptoms and uh, when the loop diuretics alone is not sufficient, we will go for the addition of thiazide diuretics along with it. For example, hydrochlorothiazide and metolazone. And in some cases, Aldosterone receptor antagonist is added in order to reduce the mortality and morbidity associated with systolic heart failure and patients with ejection fraction less than 35%. This is because there is a term called aldosterone escape. A term called aldosterone escape where the aldosterone secretion will not be uh, reduced due to the administration of ACE inhibitors and angiotensin receptor blockers. In such cases, an addition of aldosterone receptor antagonist will help in reducing the mortality and morbidity. And the next one is ascites due to liver cirrhosis. We know whenever there is a liver damage, the accumulation of fluid takes place in near the abdominal region. We call it as ascites. So diuretics along with salt restriction is required or which is the first line therapy in ascites due to liver cirrhosis. So the choice of diuretics is spironolactone which is a potassium sparing diuretic because it has an, it has an anti-androgenic effect. And this spironolactone is accompanied with loop diuretic in such cases when the treatment fails. In both heart failure and cirrhosis, renal dysfunction takes place uh, which will ultim ultimately lead to the activation of renin angiotensin aldosterone system to increase the fluid retention. And the fourth condition where we use diuretics is fluid overload can occur in renal insufficiency patients or acute kidney injury patients. Thus, loop diuretics are favored initial therapy. Renal replacement therapy is necessary for long term solution but initiation therapy is usually started with loop diuretics 
and remember whenever a patient is having a kidney injury we will all, always choose loop diuretics and now nephrotic syndrome nephrotic syndrome is nothing but the body creates too much protein in the urine that is we call it as proteinuria so the, this is characterized by proteinuria hypoalbuminemia and hyperlipidemia remember here albumin level is reduced in the blood nephrotic syndrome the albumin level is reduced in the blood edematous condition caused by activation of epithelial sodium channels in the collecting duct which will cause edema formation renin angiotensin aldosterone system also plays a role in this mechanism all diuretics requires albumin for delivering the drug to the renal tubules remember all diuretics requires albumin for carrying it to the renal tubules we know in this case there is a condition called hypoalbuminemia whereas reduced albumin level in the blood so because of this the drug cannot be carried to the renal tubules thus when treating this condition that is nephrotic syndrome it is always recommended to uh, treat with an diuretic along with an albumin because we need albumin to carry it to the site of action so thus a combination of albumin plus diuretics is always recommended in nephrotic syndrome and which can be uh, added or cannot be added with uh, epithelial uh, sodium channel inhibitor example is triamterene or amyloride and the sixth condition where we use is hypertension which is very much known the most common or uh, first line is thiazide which is the best first choice for hypertension example chlorthalidone and because this thiazide diuretic is chosen because it has reduced cardiovascular uh, damage risk and indapamide will not interfere with lipid and glucose metabolism remember indapamide will not interfere with the glucose metabolism thus this drug is a choice in patients with hypertension and diabetes so indapamide is a choice of drug in patients having diabetes and then loop diuretics is also preferred when the patient is having ckd i i already told you that when our patient is having a kidney injury we always go for loop diuretics so when a patient is having ckd we go for loop diuretics or when the patient is having a glomerular filtration rate less than or equal to 30 ml per minute we'll go for loop diuretics and the next one is potassium sparing diuretic so when our patient is having a potassium loss we know loop diuretics as well as thiazide diuretics has a, a side effect that may cause hypokalemia so whenever uh, when a patient is having a more potassium loss we will go for potassium sparing diuretic which will not cause loss of potassium or which will not cause hypokalemia and the seventh condition is nephrolithiasis and hypercalciuria we know thiazide induced reabsorption of calcium is advantageous in nephrolithiasis and hypercalciuria release of calcium in urine can cause accumulation of calcium and stone formation we know the release of calcium in the urine can cause uh, stones in the uh, urinary tract so thus when a thiazide diuretic is given this can induce reabsorption of calcium and prevent the release of calcium into the urine so this is a, a choice of drug in nephrolithiasis and hypercalciuria and hypercalcemia we know hypercalcemia is increased calcium level in the blood so loop diuretics excretes calcium from the blood so this will take calcium into the urine and will be excreted in the urine so in such cases we will use loop diuretic in order to remove the calcium from the body and the ninth condition is diabetes insipidus diabetes insipidus is nothing we know there will be urine production but the sodium will not be excreted low sodium excretion in such cases we use thiazide diuretic which will help in the excretion of sodium in distal tubules and the 10th condition the last one is osmotherapy 
osmotherapy is a mainstay of medical therapy for patients having increased intracranial pressure after traumatic brain injury or cerebral edema the edema in the cerebral region and there is an increased intracranial pressure in such cases we use osmotherapy so hyperosmolar therapy with mannitol will reduce the intracranial pressure rapidly within 1 hour within 1 hour through and rebound in through and rebound is possible so rebound is nothing but initially the intracranial pressure may rise and then it will reduced so that is called as rebound so anyway whenever a mannitol is prescribed in some cases initially it can increase intracranial pressure but obviously it will reduce it within the next 1 hour and mannitol also promotes diuresis in acute kidney injury and excretion of toxic metabolites and substances so that's it for the video so in the next video we will discuss about the effects of diuretics and the classification of diuretics so thank you for watching stay updated with us please subscribe to metodrex.com thank you